There's been a brand new release of Ubuntu 16.10 and I've started the process of reviewing each of the derivatives. So you may be wondering, is it worth upgrading straight from Ubuntu 16.04, the last long-term support release? So in this video, I'll talk a bit further about is it actually worth it, what are the benefits and what are the losses? But if you're the type of person who likes distro hopping and you want the most newest and bleeding edge software, then no, I'm not here to dissuade you from upgrading or changing your system. No, you've probably made up your mind now and you don't really need to watch the rest of this video. But if you're newer to Ubuntu, then let me give you some more information about what the benefits and losses are. Now, an immediate loss is the support time. The long-term support releases of Ubuntu, these are Ubuntu's 1204, 1404 and 1604, are supported for five years. So that'll be until 2017, 2019 and 2021 respectively. The interim releases for the six monthly interim releases of Ubuntu are only supported for nine months. There's your big loss there. Literally, if you take an interim release of Ubuntu, you've got until three months after the next release to upgrade. For the long-term support releases with five years, you can go quite some time without having to upgrade. Your other benefits are newer kernel and newer software. If you're having a problem with an item of hardware on your computer or are getting regular crashes on certain software applications, then the interim releases could be a good upgrade. But you can backport some of the software changes into the long-term support release. At time of recording, there is no easy way of backporting the kernel just yet. But with the previous long-term support release of so Ubuntu 14.04, you would get the kernel upgrade right through into the software center. So I'm expecting the same thing again in time. But you can grab a new kernel from the mainline repository, but this you have to manually install. For example, I just click the latest folder here, which is 4.8.2. So for me, it'd be the 64-bit system. So I'll take the Linux headers all, Linux headers generic, and the Linux image generic. You just download them all into one folder. You would type something like this, sudo dpkg-i star.deb. That's a manual upgrade, and you would have to keep doing that. You can get newer applications by adding additional PPAs, personal package archives. I'll leave a link to this searcher here, because you can use it and just search for various different applications. So for example, a newer version of Kodi would be XBMC, so I'll be looking for Team XBMC. It could just be easier to search on Google at this point, uh, rather than trying to sift through these. Because unfortunately this dates back to quite some time ago, and yeah, there's a lot of here. So by using Google I can type Kodi Ubuntu PPA. Do we get a result here? Yes. So the repository is launchpad.net team xbmc archive PPA. And it gives you the commands to type right there. So sudo add apt repository PPA team xbmc slash PPA, sudo apt get update, and then you'll see the upgrades appear. And you can check which versions of Ubuntu they're available for. So Yakety is the 16.10, Xenial is 1604. So they're right up to date. In terms of more specific improvements to Ubuntu and the derivatives, Ubuntu itself gained some graphical improvements for older systems and VirtualBox, and there's also access to the Unity 8 desktop. So realistically, I would say, unless you're having crashes or graphic slowdowns in Ubuntu 16.04, I would not rush to upgrade. In fact, I would just leave it at 16.04 and bypass the 16.10 release. For Kubuntu, there was a more significant change. We've got a much newer version of the Plasma desktop. So now it's up to 5.7. I think the older one came with 5.5. Now I had quite horrific issues on in terms of crashes on 5.5. All that was gone by the time of Plasma 5.7. So that upgrade would have been really worthwhile for me. Except I use KDE Neon and I have a much newer version of the Plasma desktop. So <laughs> kind of negated that was. For Lubuntu, um, barely anything has changed. The switch to LXQt has been postponed until the next version, 1704, and I don't believe any changes are being made now to the LXDE desktop. Absolutely no point in upgrading to this version. I would bypass the 16.10 release. Ubuntu GNOME. So you've got a newer version of the GNOME desktop and the GTK3 applications. That could be worthwhile, but um, sorry, I haven't looked at Ubuntu GNOME just yet. 
Ubuntu Mate. Well, I did review this distro and they've increased the version of the Mate desktop and it's now based on GTK3. So it's quite a significant change, although to the end user, there really is no difference. They'd sorted out the theming, the styling and the stability of the applications and it all seemed to be really good. I didn't do a long-term test on this distro, so maybe there might be some further stability issues. I can't comment on that. However, from what I saw, it looked perfectly fine. But considering the new GTK3 base, I would hold off for at least a couple of months, if not bypass this version entirely. Ubuntu Studio, I can't see there's been much in the way of changes at all really, it's just newer software versions. No, I wouldn't even bother upgrading that. Zubuntu, same again, I can't see anything much in the way of changes. Now again, I haven't reviewed this distro, so I can't say for certain, but it just looks like a slightly newer version of the x -Base desktop, but considering that hasn't changed drastically in at least the past couple of years, I wouldn't rush to upgrade to this. I would leave it or bypass it entirely. So I hope that gives you an idea of, is it worth actually upgrading to Ubuntu 1610? It's your choice at the end of the day. It's your system. You can do with it as you wish. Now, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.